is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logo that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What's good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with a quick video. Today we're going to talk about Jonas Valanciunas and his, uh, his play and, and how he's playing in Memphis. Um, I think Jonas was a guy that I always covered on my channel. And I had gave him um, a lot of series because I really wanted him to succeed because he was a center that I like. I like the skill centers to have soft touch. Um, he can obviously he's one of them. He can shoot mid range. He can shoot eighty percent from the free throw line like he did the last three years. And obviously he's a decent post player and he's tough. He he's a guy that's very physical. He doesn't really shy away from contact. He likes to go into you. Um, and he's he's a hard worker when he plays on the court. Majority of his plays was getting offensive rebounds and putbacks and finishing around the rim because they really didn't run that many plays for him, especially in his first couple years. And um, I personally felt like Jonas Valanciunas was a guy that had a limited potential when it comes to being a center because of his mobility, because of his legitimate size and his touch around the basket. And he's always been a decent passer when you have the ball in his hands, but you really didn't. And I feel like that's the reason why Toronto struggled a lot is because when they got to the playoffs, they relied a lot on Kyle Lowry and a lot on DeMar DeRozan to create shots, but they always got double teamed or trapped or they had to score on tough defenders in a slow down game because the playoffs is slow and it's ugly and teams prepare for you and teams focus in on your star players and try to take their games away and it kind of forced them to play a game that they really didn't want and they had to score a lot in traffic and take tough shots and that's not a recipe for success in the NBA especially when they're not the greatest shot makers um, and they couldn't get the shots that they was comfortable and they wanted I feel like they should have tried to diversify the offense a little bit and go inside out a little bit more or try to utilize their role players a lot more than what they did even though they did eventually get to the Eastern Conference Finals once. Um, they also ended up trading DeMar DeRozan and Jonas, and they kept Kyle Lowry, who's going to be a free agent anyway. But um, I, feel, I feel like Jonas needed a team like this that really needs him, that really relies on him, that can really utilize him and his strengths a lot better. He didn't really play that many minutes this year for Toronto. He only played 18.8 minutes a game. He played in 30 games. And he started 10 of them. They didn't really need him as much because they had Serge Ibaka and Pascal Siakam and Yaka Perto too. So they all were sharing and eating each other minutes up. And I feel like him getting traded to Memphis was going to allow him um, to really blossom as a player and really show his talent. And it has. He, he's been averaging 17 points a game. And that's a career high. But the scary part is he's only playing 25 minutes a game still in Memphis. And he can really show... And I've seen a lot of games where he give you 20 and 10, 20 and 13, or even at least, you know, 18 and 19 points or 15. And he'll give you eight to nine rebounds at worst. And he always been a solid rebounder, even in Toronto in the limited minutes. That was one of his strongest abilities was the fact that he can crash the boards offensively and defensively. And he played hard um, on that area in Toronto. And that's uh, when, one of his main skills is rebounding. And, I feel like in Memphis, they were going to unleash him and, and free him from his chains and allow him to be who he is and allow him to get more opportunities. And when he played in Toronto, he only got eight shot attempts a game. And obviously now that he's in Memphis, it has went up all the way to 12 shots a game. And he's still knocking it down at the same efficiency that he did in Toronto when he got major minutes. But also he's knocking it down at a higher efficiency than he did the last couple of years, even though he has got more shots. He has still been just as or a lot better or, I mean, just as or more efficient than he been with less shot attempts. So it just shows you that sometimes it's the style of play that the team run, the system that they run, and sometimes it can be the coach. And, you know, I feel like Jonas Valanciunas was a guy that was being underutilized in Toronto, and it's good that he has been able to really showcase more of his skills and more of his talent because he really deserved it. 
you know, to get that type of money that Toronto gave him, it was worth it. But if you're going to try to build a team around Lowry and DeRozan, you need to get more production out of the players that you're getting money for because most people don't want to play in Toronto. But not only that, you only got a certain amount of cap that you can spend and giving Jonas such a big part of your cap and not utilizing him and letting him play his game and get more opportunities, it kind of limits you because you're paying him so much money, plus you're paying DeRozan and Kyle Lowry a, sum, a large slump, sum of money. And you would think that they'll try to get more out of Jonas because of that and allow him to develop and get more touches, but it never really a it never really happened with Dwayne Casey. And obviously this season he was having one of his better seasons um, in Toronto, but injuries ended up hurting him a lot and ended up hurting his minutes and his his role. But also they had a lineage of bigs that was eating up a lot of minutes and him getting traded to Toronto, I mean to Memphis, really helped him a lot. And I think this is the Jonas that I wanted to see. I still think he can get better than this. Jonas can possibly be an 18 and 10 guy. If you give Jonas Valanciunas 30 to 35 minutes and an opportunity to get at least 13 to 15 shots a game, he could convert him. He's showing that already. He's averaging 17 and 7, and he's only getting 25 minutes. Just imagine if he got an opportunity to play at least 5 to 10 more minutes, he's going to at least get three to four more points, and that will put him at 18, 20 points, 21 points. And I think he can do it. In Memphis, they need somebody like that. Um, losing Marcus Saw, they need somebody that can score in a the post. They need somebody that can stretch out the defense. They need somebody physical and tough in that paint. Um, and Jonas can, you know, satisfy all those needs, plus he's 10 years younger almost than Marcus Saw. And he has similar ability with the soft pass to the soft touch. And, and being a selfless player, he has some of the same qualities that made Marcus Saw such a player that everybody fell in love. Even though Marcus Saw is a significantly better defender in his peak. Um, Jonas has shown the ability to be more aggressive offensively, and that's something I thought that Mark Gasol could do, but he never really focused focused on that because he was so unselfish um, to a fault because I feel like Mark Gasol could have dominated. In some seasons, he will play harder, and he will get off to a great start, and then he will just go back to that um, selfless Mark Gasol and not the aggressive attack, destroy people, Marcus Hall, because he can post up, he can go left or right, he can hit fadeaways, he can, you know, spin move, he can run the offense through Marcus Hall, and he just, instead of being aggressive the whole season, he will always get more comfortable and fall back into that old Marcus Hall of just being a star or potentially just an all-star caliber player, not a superstar caliber player. But I feel like this was a good experiment experiment for the Memphis Grizzlies. Not only do you get Jonas Valanciunas' bird rights because he's on your roster, you have the ability to get a guy that has been loyal, has not asked for a trade, has accepted and done his role no matter what that coach asked him to do, and that's the type of player that you want, especially if you're trying to win. And a guy that has willingly took a pay cut to stay in Toronto, even though a lot of people don't want to play in Toronto, he was loyal to them, and he was willing to take less. Um, Memphis, that's what they need, somebody that's willing to stay there, um, somebody that can really be a, a, a help to their team, and he can. Somebody that can play with Jaron Jackson Jr., and he can do that too because he's more of a forward space and four. And you can also run Jaron Jackson at the five, but he's not the rim protector right now to play the five, and his body just needs a little bit more tightening up and development. But other than that, if you look at this deal, you get a guy that can give you some of the similar production as Marcus saw, plus he's a uh, ten years almost younger than Marcus saw, and on top of that, he's a guy that is a better rebounder than Marcus saw. Not and Marcus saw defense has declined over the years because of age and mobility, but Jonas can set a, you know basically fill that void in, and you know he might even be cheaper depending on how the contract goes. But I love this opportunity that he has been given. I love seeing Jonas play giving you 20 and 10 the guy has been amazing he seems happy he seems like he finally has found a team that believes in him and really wants to get the best out of him and utilize him to the best of his ability i just want to see can he really be a starter can he really be a guy you can go to on a daily basis because that's what makes a star and a superstar in this league can he demand for the ball can he continue to stay efficient can he become a solid rim protector can he you know continue to show that he, he can be a reliable force for this team and they need him they need somebody that's committed they need somebody loyal they need somebody that's willing to stay and Jonas has checked all those boxes too so I definitely want to see what they're going to do because obviously Mike Conley 
is looking like he's going to be going in this summer. Um, he has been a good fit with Jonas because he allows him to get floor space and with the pick and pop because they have to respect Conley three-point shooting. And when they go under the screen, he can get to the basket, dump it off for the mid-range jumper or allow Jonas to roll to the basket, get dump-offs and dunks and layups and even sometimes alley-oops, which makes Jonas' job a lot easier. But when they lose a guy like that, it's going to be a lot harder and points going to be a lot harder to come by because the, the defense can suck in and they can wall people off if they don't have the right shooting the right type of point guard which they have now but if Mike Conley is traded I want to see what direction they're going to go in I like Javon Carter but he's no superstar he's no all-star caliber player he's a he's a rotation player um and that's a void that they're gonna have to fill but I see that they're not really in a rush to trade Mike Conley and I don't blame him he's making so much money it's hard to get something valuable back for a player of his caliber um uh, especially of his age and his injury history but for him to be worth so much money, you have to give contracts that equal that. Plus, you still have to get talent that you want back. And I don't know if people are in a rush to take Mike Conley's, you know, contract with that type of commitment, that type of salary cap that it would take up just to get him. Plus, on top of that, you know, it's not too many teams that need a point guard because most of them get them through the draft. And if they're not getting them through the draft, they already have one. Um, plus, if they don't have one, it's an abundance of them. So it's not that hard to get a point guard no more. Um, and like I said, you can always just draft one. So that's always the other option. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think Jonas can be an all-star? He putting up all-star caliber number 17 and seven so far in Memphis in 25 minutes. So he, he's showing that he could be a possible all-star in the West, um, or on another team. He, he's showing that ability. He always showed that ability. It's just that they utilize him a lot more averaging a career high of 12 shot attempts a game. He has never really even come close to that in Toronto, and he probably can get more than that depending on how things go this summer for the Memphis Grizzlies. But he looks free, he looks happy, and he looks like he can go out there and play his game and be himself, and that's important when you make a trade like that, and that's important when you're trying to replace talent and you're trying to find other guys that can fill other roles, and he's a guy that can come off the bench. He's a guy that don't mind starting. He's a guy that can go without touches. He's a guy that can take touches and convert them at a high clip because he's shooting 58% so far in Memphis. So I'm loving it. I'm happy for him. I want to continue to see him do better, but how far can he go? How good can he get? Can he get even more better? Can he get even more confident? Can he take over games? I want to see that. I don't see them do it in stretches. I don't see them do it in patches, but I haven't seen them do it consistently. And that's what gets you to the all-star level. And that's what gets you to the franchise player level. I don't think he's going to be a franchise player, but I think he is a selfless, great complimentary player. And with the right team and the right system, I think he could get to the all-star game because of his ability to do everything like the dirty work, setting the screens, finishing around the paint and doing the simple things and it just adds up and people start respecting you and your teammates are liking you when you don't need the ball or if you do they see you finishing it and finishing off the play that's confidence in them and that's chemistry that you build with your teammates but if this team don't win it's hard to see him as an all-star but in the future we don't know how good this team will be and the fact that he's still in his mid-20s allows him to still develop and still be able to be there for the long term but also he can build chemistry with his teammates that he can be with for the next four to five years plus like i said i think memphis has a strong chance of keeping him in memphis and i think that's one of the biggest reasons why they let marcus all go is because they can get a similar type of player but not only that they can get him for the long term and he's still young so he can be around the team that they already starting and built um with jaron jackson and, and some of these other guys plus they're going to get a high lottery pick this year and they have guys that can come in and play multiple positions. But we'll see what they go with in the draft. So let me know what you guys think. Comment, like, subscribe, and share. Check out my older videos. I got playlists on my channel. I do tributes. I do breakdowns of players and teams. I also do the Summer League NBA draft. I also do um, trade deadline and buyouts and all things NBA, even discussions just like this. Um, I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. Like on Facebook. Like on check out my website. Also, my website, my my Facebook page will be in the description and in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think about Jonas Valanciunas and let me know was it good that he left Toronto? Do you regret? Do you miss him? Or do you think this was an opportunity that benefited Toronto? 
and benefited Memphis, but also benefited Jonas and allowed him to be free and play a game more and get a lot more opportunities to show his talent. And that's what you want to do. That's sometimes what people want, especially if you can do that and get paid. I can't hate on you. I'm gone.